Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is not one I really wished I was filming. Um, you've probably already seen by the title of this video, I have a major thrips infestation. And it's my fault, but it's not my fault. And I'm really annoyed with myself, but I thought, I thought I would, rather than feel defeated by this, I thought I would embrace it as a learning experience and obviously learn from my mistakes and kind of have a little project where the project is not welcome at this time, if I'm honest, because I'm so busy and I think this is how I probably let this get to the stage because I wasn't checking my plants daily as I normally would. But long story short, I have a major thrips infestation and I'm going to try and battle them with you. So how it started was, and I really want to just go over this quickly because I need to stress the importance of quarantine your new plants. So if you follow me on Instagram, you will know that my variegated syngonium that I got from plants.com came with what I thought was spider mites, but I couldn't see any webbing. I could just see damage. Um, they, it turned out to be thrips. Um, I only found one or two on there and I didn't really, I didn't really, I didn't really understand the severity of thrips and didn't think that it could go everywhere. And obviously they could fly and they reproduce really quickly. And I, to be honest, I thought I had tackled it and I hadn't. So I, when I first got them, I, if you can see this plant shelf here, the, the end of it, I put all my new plants from plants.com on there and um, because of the lighting was good and it has a humidifier there and I just thought I can put them there and I left them in quarantine there. Um, I didn't leave them in quarantine for long enough and I put my syngonium, I repotted it multiple times, um, well once, I repotted it once and then I kind of like cared for it in the sense that I soap watered it down and stuff um, and then I put it on my plant shelf in my bedroom and it looked really pretty and it's literally my plant shelf in my bedroom. I love it because all the plants touch and they look so nice and this is another thing you shouldn't do. Um, but I'm really limited for space. I live in a, a flat, I live in a two bed flat but one bedroom has no plants in it because it's um, cold and it's got bad lighting. Um, so I, I didn't, I treated it but I didn't, didn't give its quarantine um, period real thought. Um, so I basically last night, um, I noticed it was on my variegated monstera. I just had a bad feeling. I thought I'd go check it, but my variegated monstera was never next to my syngonium at the same time. It actually must've, they must've just been on that shelf. And then they've obviously then moved over to the plant. So my variegated monstera, uh, my variegated monstera usually sits here, uh, in this position here. So it's obviously kind of like they've moved over just from being on the shelf, um, which I was I was I was so gutted, completely gutted. The damage caused to the um, variegated monstera is minimal for considering it, it's got thrips. Um, so I'm thankful for that. I do feel like I've caught it early. I caught it early, but it's I would say it's on a lot of plants. So I've seen it on my variegated raindrop which really doesn't look good um i found it on my micans yesterday so when i was dusting some leaves i was watching youtube and i was having a coffee and i was just stroking my micans because i was trying to get like the dust off it and then i was thinking like there's some sort of resistance with my thumb and i was just like i don't know i remember thinking like this feels a bit different and then i looked closer and i was literally just stroking like thrip babies and i was like oh. <laughs> so i gave that a plant love um what, what's she called um plant life in the tropics so i gave it a plant life in the tropics bath um and then i also um kind of just put that in water to recover because it's it was a small micans it was a cutting so it wasn't like a major job um, and that's when I did everything else, like my normal day. And then last night before bed, I just had this feeling. So I went to check my monstera and it was, it has, it has thrips. I don't know how, I believe thrips can't fly well, but they can obviously fly because they have wings. So I'm yet to check everything else. Um, I'm yet to really check my plant shelf, but nevertheless, I'm going to treat it anyway, because my syngonium was literally moved from different position because I was like oh it looks nice here it looks nice here and I was literally just moving it on the same shelf but it's touched every plant 
Um, so I'm going to treat all of them and one being my really big um, Raptophora tetrasperma, which I have fallen in love with again. So I'm just, <laughs> fingers crossed it's okay. Um, but the thing that I found the most helpful and the advice, and without this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have found them, if I'm honest with you. When I have a leaf, I can get a torch um, on my phone and I can, I can use the torch and look at the top of the leaf and it's really hard to see the bugs and thrips because their the babies are so small and unless you've got really good eyesight so i'll have my glasses on and i'll be there and looking and i can't see anything um but that same leaf if you take your torch behind the leaf so your leaf essentially just glows it glows like green or whatever color it is if it's variegated it's white and you can see like marks so like dots um not necessarily the damage as such but if obviously if you see damage you know you have thrips um, but you, you can see little marks and then every time I saw a little dot, I would check under the leaf and it would be a thrip. Yeah, I last night I panic bought a really recommended product. I'll put it on the screen somewhere. I forget the name of it. Um, that wasn't meant to come on Wednesday and it's Monday today. Um, I chose the free delivery option because delivery was £5 and the goods were only £6. So I chose the free delivery option and I didn't see that the ETA then changed to Friday. So <laughs> I can't wait till Friday, um, which is fine. It's going to be okay. Um, but I, I, I feel really, really stressed because work is busy and just life is so busy right now. Um, and I wished it was like a Saturday or a Sunday. Um, but I, I know that doing this at night time is fine because you kind of, it just, you can see the thrips better because everything around you is dark and stuff. So after work today, when I finish work at five, I will get on with my treatment. Okay, so I found an example of, there's a thrip there. Can you see him moving? Can you see it? So we've got the light behind the um, the leaf. This died a tragic death of um, root rot anyway, but the thrips obviously didn't help. But yeah, you can see it moving. So putting a light behind um, a leaf really, really helps because you can literally just pick it up really, really easily. Um, but with this scrammy fire, I'm just going to bend the plant because I've not got much left of it. But yeah, you can see them all there. Okay, so this is what I have done. Um, I've put tape over it to kind of stop overwatering the soil and then a bag and tape, there's tape under that and then I've put a bag over as well. I've given this one um, three treatments of soap and water because I'm obviously waiting for the actual hardcore stuff to arrive. Um, and then this is the culprit. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's really obvious to see bugs on here, but it's just annoying that I thought that I got them and I obviously hadn't, unless I did get them and then one just like moved to another plant and then it kind of, that's when, I don't know, I don't know really. The problem's worse than I thought. Not a problem though, I've got the goods on the way to fix it, which I hear very good things about, so I'm still hopeful. Um, but yeah, the problem is in like the amount of thrips on there is a lot worse than I thought. I could just see um, kind of one or two adults before and now I can see babies. Um, I feel really helpless because I can't do anything now. Like I just feel like, I mean, not, it's annoying that I don't have the stuff now because I hate the fact that they're on there and they're just sucking the life out of the plant. But I don't really know what to do. Uh, I'm going to set up on my husband's side of the bed, I'm going to set up a quarantine station. So I've been at work all day. Um, so I've been really busy, but I'm going to basically set up the grow lights in there and then kind of put all the culprits there. And then I'm gonna put, like I said before, put some nice music on, on my headphones, just check all my other plants out and check how big this problem really is.
have finished setting up my quarantine station now I am just going to go around and actually check my other plants so I didn't have a chance last night because it was like it was literally nearly midnight um when I noticed this so now I've got the time that I finished work I think it's like eight o'clock already or something um I'm going to go check out my other plants if they have any signs of having thrips they're going to come over here as well and live here for the foreseeable um but for me like I, I said I feel better um, one, my plants can be quarantined over here for so long because it's such a lowly area. So I'm glad I've got these grow lights. Um, but I feel better being in a, a, with everything being in its place. So although this isn't where they were before and where they would naturally live, um, they look really cute here and I'm okay with them being here. So I'm going to be a lot less stressed with, um, with the whole situation if I'm not feeling like I'm falling over them because they're quarantined in a corner on the floor you know they're actually they actually have a place in the flat so that has made me feel a lot better um and it's always good to have a little mix around as long as you're not mixing um infestated plants with non-infestated plants like I do so <laughs> don't do that um but yeah I fingers fingers crossed don't have any more problems I'm looking at my Rapidophora tetrasperma because I know I know that has problems. It was literally like intertwined with my variegated syngonium for weeks. So that's going to be annoying. But so I've just come back from collecting my Provanto spray treatment. And I also have neem oil. My plan is to use the Provanto on the plants that I know definitely have thrips and then the neem oil as a preventative measure for anything else that was in close proximity, but doesn't look like it has thrips. Um, with that said, I have just received my second order from plants.com, which I actually ordered before I knew the infestation, well, before I knew the syngonium, the culprit that was from there had kind of spread. Um, I wasn't as annoyed with the situation at that point. So I did order um, more plants and my varicosum that I have just received has thrip damage all over it. So that's really annoying. Um, and I, I assume with it having so much throat damage, it has thrips as well. So I'm going to be treating that with Provanto. Um, I'm just, I'm just scared it's going to um, kill my plants. I'm scared the treatment is going to have more of a damaging effect on my plants. But I'm just going to do it um, with the um, varicosum. And I think the green plants, I don't know why, but I feel like they're hardier. I'm more scared about the variegated syngonium because it's like so white um the monstera is predominantly green anyway so i don't know but fingers crossed this works i keep saying fingers crossed because i'm really hoping <laughs> everything works but i'm gonna go do the treatment now and hopefully it will just get rid of it <laughs> checking my plants in the quarantine in the quarantine station daily I'd say probably about three or four times a day um just for any signs of thrips and I haven't seen haven't seen a single thrip since or a baby or anything um but what I am going to do is I'm going to leave them there for two weeks in total maybe a bit longer um because they've got there's two grow lights in there now I changed the bulb and the other one um so there's no real urgency to move them back into situ um, so I'm going to leave them there for maybe two, two, three weeks um, just to make sure any kind of babies or eggs I didn't get don't hatch and then we're in the same situation. But yeah, the Provanto, um, yeah, it stunk. Um, it kind of started, I did it in the bathroom. There was, um, there's no windows in my bathroom, which is really annoying for me, but there's just like, it's well away from my, my pigs and it wasn't anywhere where they could obviously be problematic to them which is really really important because it's really it's poisonous to ingest for animals and humans um 
so I did it in the bathroom and I left the, the plants that I treated with the Provanto there overnight um, just so that they could dry off and then I put them back the next morning um, in situ and then I put the, the grow lights on because what you don't want to do is do it in the day and then put them back in situ and then be burnt by daylight or burnt by grow lights because it's best doing the treatment at night time because the light can burn the leaves with the treatment on it. So that's another really key point to bear in mind. Um, but I'm really happy with it. I honestly, I just, I feel like it just worked, you know, it was just really good. Um, and then also um, I had an absolutely mad Sunday. Um, I've got every single plant I own, which is like a hundred at least, all in the bathroom. Everything else that was near um, the, the Syngonium when it was in the living room, I treated with Provanto and everything else I did a neem oil um, soap and water treatment and that also stunk um, but yeah I did that and that worked really really well so I'm I'm really happy with the treatment and the progress I do want to point out I did the soap method and the soap bath um, multiple times for the the plants with thrips even the micans which are small roots plant everything was submerged in a soap bath and it did not work the thrips was, were not going it absolutely did not work so i don't know how plant life in the tropics manages to have success with that because i did it multiple times and it honestly did not work so i'm really happy i still went ahead and brought the provanto but that's that's something that um if you've made it to the end of this video, then congratulations, because I feel like this is a long one anyway. But that is like a really, really big point for me that I I wouldn't waste your time with the soap bath method or maybe the soap spray like I was doing with some of them, the bigger ones. It just didn't work for me. It wasn't strong enough um, and could work for you. It obviously depends on how big a problem you've got. But for me, it didn't work. And I, I did it honestly multiple times. So you'd think that it would eventually start to kill them off it didn't touch them they are really robust little things but yeah i hope you found this video helpful um i feel like i've given some tips and tricks so i really hope you take that away um and i hope it helps you i'm really sorry if you're watching this and you have thrips um in your collection i feel you it's stressful um the the biggest tip i found was get a nice quarantine station and don't feel like um don't like take it as a bit of a hit just kind of treat it as like a bit of a project it was on my rare plants and i i was panicking but by the time i noticed got into action there wasn't as much damage there is damage when you put the light behind it and you can completely see it but to the naked eye without a torch you don't see it so it's honestly not that bad um but yeah fingers crossed you get it and I highly recommend Provanto. I honestly think it's the best six pounds I've ever spent. Um, so yeah, get your hands on some of that if you can. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.